What's up YouTube? Today I'm talking to you about two ETFs that I would rather own than the S&P 500 or something like VU. And this right here, if you can see this, you could literally be making a multi-million dollar mistake by owning VU instead of two funds that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. And it's not just these two specific funds, but it is owning some type of a tech and a growth oriented fund and then combining that with a dividend paying more value oriented or dividend growth ETF. So we're gonna go through a scenario here where we build a portfolio with 50% into my favorite tech growth ETF and 50% into my favorite dividend growth ETF. And this is gonna be the end result after 40 years based on historical returns. Remember, future returns are not guaranteed based on historical returns, so always remember that. But based on how these funds have performed and the scenario that I built, literally you could be making a one to two million dollar mistake by owning VOO. In the growth category, the only two funds that I would consider if I'm anywhere you know, 10 years or away from retirement or more are Vanguard Information Technology ETF, VGT, and QQQ. At the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you exactly which one of these I prefer over the other. And right here, we're comparing them to VOO, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. And so you can see we've got lots of history with each of these. VGT started back in 2004, QQQ in 1999, couldn't have found a worse time to start a tech-based ETF, and then VU uh, in 2010. Expense ratio, um, VGT is at 0.10%, QQQ is at 0.20, so 100% more expensive, right? And then VU is at 0.03%, so much, much cheaper, but still uh, on a you know, a total basis, they're still very cheap funds to own. All right, for dividend yield, VGT pays a 0.83% dividend yield, QQQ 0.68, and then VU 1.57%. Those dividends have actually grown faster in VGT and QQQ than in VOO, and that does make a difference over time. We're gonna see when we look at total returns. Here to date, uh, VGT and QQQ have gotten absolutely crushed, right? Down 24 and 27%. We know that growth in tech stocks have not done well. That's why I think it's a great time for long-term investors to be buying funds like these, but that's just my opinion. And then VU is down 15%, which is still a pretty big decline. Okay, and this is where we really start to see some differences in how these portfolios are managed. These are both tech-based portfolios, right? VGT has 370 holdings, but 58% of them are concentrated in the top 10. QQQ only has 102 holdings, but 49% are in the top 10. And VU has 506, and then 26% are in the top 10. The two premium premier dividend ETFs that the only ones that I would consider owning uh, with the stage of investment that I'm at, SCHG, SCHD, and VIG. Expense ratio is cheaper than the other two, 0 0.06, and then 0 0.06 for VIG as well pay much higher dividends, right? SCHD pays a 3.17% trailing 12-month dividend yield. VIG pays 1.83%. The dividend growth rate is very strong, 14% for SCHD over the last three years. VIG is at 10.8%. And then over the last five years, 12% for SCHD and VIG is at 8%. Okay, and we can see, you know, these more dividend-paying value-oriented funds are you know, down a lot less than the tech ones, but even VOO, SCHD is only down 3% year to date, VIG is down 8.7%, and VU is down 15%. Okay, and then they are even, you know, even these are a little bit more concentrated though, where you could see SCHD has 40% in the top 10, VIG has 29%, and VU has 26%. Okay, for VGT, the price to earnings ratio is 20 0.81 on average between all the stocks that it owns. And if we're just looking at the top 10 holdings in VGT, you've got Apple at 22%, okay? This is gonna come into factor which one I would prefer, VGT versus QQQ. Microsoft at 16%, actually 17%, NVIDIA at three, Visa at three, MasterCard at two, Broadcom at two, Cisco at two, Accenture at 1.8, Salesforce 1.6, and Adobe at 1.5. So look at how heavily invested it is and Apple and Microsoft. Okay, QQQ, you still have a PE ratio right around 20, right? Same thing as VGT, but much less concentrated in the top two positions. You've got Apple at 13, Microsoft at 10, and then Amazon at five, Alphabet at 
six, because that, that's two classes of Google shares, NVIDIA at three, Tesla at three, Pepsi at two, Costco at two, and Meta at two. So you see some different companies, but most importantly, you see less concentration in the top two, which allows you to have a little bit higher of a position size, percentage size, and things like Amazon, Alphabet, NVIDIA, and Tesla. It's also less risk, right? Like if something catastrophic happened to Apple or Microsoft, these funds would both be hurt, but VGT would be hurt a lot more. All right, let's see how these have performed historically. And so if we look back all the way to 2004, that's when both of these funds were available. You can see since then, QQQ is up 768%, and that's total return, versus VGT up 700%. But if we only go back 10 years, then VGT is up 463%, and QQQ is up 385%. Now, the thing to consider is that these are volatile, right? Look at how many times over the last 10 years they've been down more than 15%. This line right here is a 15% drop. This line right here, 30% drop. So we've had a couple drops of 30% or more over just the last 10 years. All right, let's jump over to VIG and SCHD and compare the top 10s, right? Okay, in VIG, price to earnings ratio is at 17. So, you know, not that much lower than QQQ and VGT, right? <clears throat> and then here are the top 10. United Health at 4%, Johnson & Johnson, 3.8, Microsoft, JP Morgan, Visa, Procter & Gamble, The Home Depot, MasterCard, Pepsi, and Coca-Cola. SCHD, this is where you could see SCHD trades at a much, much greater discount or lower multiple of 12 than VIG does. Okay, and then looking at the top 10, you've got Merck at 4.5%, IBM at 4.3%, Amgen at 4 The Home Depot, Texas Instruments, Cisco Systems, Pepsi, Pfizer, Broadcom, and Lockheed Martin. Okay, and if we uh, look at the total return of these two, and, and we're going max here, then you can see SCHD is up 336% since uh, 2011. VIG is only up 282. And this factors in dividends as well. And then VU, which is kind of crazy, these this you know value-oriented dividend fund, SCHD, is actually beating VU over the last 10 years as well. Okay, and what I've done with using Y charts is I have put together a model portfolio of 50% invested in QQQ and 50% invested in SCHD going back all the way to 2012 and it shows a comparison against VOO or the S&P 500. This is gonna tell you exactly what, how that strategy would have performed against the S&P 500. So if you had been doing that strategy since you know 2012, putting 50% in each, year to date, your portfolio would be down 14% versus the S&P 500 down 14%. Over the last three years though, you would be up 15%, this is annualized, 15% per year, versus the S&P 500 up just 11. Over the last five years, you'd be up 14% versus S&P 500 up 11. And over the last 10 years, you'd be up basically 16% per year versus the S&P 500, which has also had a very good 10 years, up 13% per year. And when you do this combination, this is starting to get into why I like this combination, QQQ and SCHD, rather than say VGT and SCHD, is because the concentration, that concentration was too high in those top two stocks for me to be comfortable. But VGT is a fantastic option as well if you're more comfortable with that. But you get this nice dividend yield, 1.53% trailing 12 months. And then you, you get a lot of that growth upside, the nice dividend, and you get actually a lower average PE ratio than what you would have owning just VU at 18.93. And so this would be the top 10 holdings if you, again, were investing 50% into QQQ and 50% into SCHD over the last 10 to 12 years versus just the S&P 500. You would have five about 5.6% in Apple, 4.29% in Microsoft, same two top positions, but a little bit less concentrated, right? Which gives you more into these other top 10. You got Pepsi at 3%, Amazon at 2.7 for the S&P 500. Then you got Amgen at 3%, Tesla at 1.85 in the S&P 500. Then you've got Cisco at 3.08. Next in the S&P 500 is Google at 1.73. Then you've got Broadcom in our fund at 3%. You've got Berkshire at 1.63. Texas Instruments at 2.89 versus United Health at 1.59. 
Merck at 2.65 versus Google at 1.55. So again, you've got about you know a little bit over 3% in Google in the S&P 500 top 10. Automatic data processing ADP at 2.52% versus ExxonMobil at 1.4%, and then IBM at 2.5% versus J&J at 1.4%. So we talked about the annual returns, right? We said, you know, anywhere between, they've actually been very strong over the last 10 years, something like 14% a year. I wanna show you a scenario of how you can literally become a millionaire doing this, and doing the S&P 500 will make you a millionaire as well. Starting with $100 monthly contribution of 500. Again, the number one way you can increase the size of your portfolio is not, um, not by picking crazy risky stocks, but actually making more money and contributing more money. So that should be our goal over time, making more money, saving more money, having fun, but investing more money over time. That's how you increase your, your lifetime wealth. Um, we're doing a 40 year period. Um, we're looking at 10% returns. That's about the average of the S&P 500, but it's gonna give us, we're doing a 2% variance. So it's gonna give us a 12% return, a 10% and an 8%. And what you can see is over 40 years, at the 10% mark, you've got $2.6 million. But look at what the difference is between you know making that 2% more, which our fund this in this version makes, than VOO. Making 12% instead of 10% over 40 years equates to $2 million more dollars, 4.6 million versus 2.6 million. And then even if you say you made 10%, let's be more conservative, you make 10% instead of 8%, then you're looking at 2.6 million instead of 1.56. So you're talking about a million dollar difference over a period of 40 years. 